So the last video um, dealing with substitution reaction is um, just a quick method for distinguishing between the two mechanisms. So if you remember for SN1 and SN2, we've talked, we've been talking about all this time about these two different pathways where uh, with one pathway, uh, that simultaneous attack of the nucleophile and loss of the leaving group, that's the SN2 pathway, and then the second pathway, loss of the leaving group, followed by attack of the nucleophile, that's the SN1 uh, pathway. And so what really, with these two mechanisms, the conditions really help to determine uh, what pathway the reaction will go through. All right, so I've developed a little a way to think about this called the ICE method. Uh, identify, characterize, uh, or categorize, sorry, and then execute. So identify meaning look at your substrate. Is it primary? Is it secondary? Is it uh, tertiary, benzylic, or allylic? Um, you look at your leaving group, you look at your nucleophile, and then you look at your solvent and determine whether or not the solvent is protic or aprotic. All right, then you categorize. Which category does the reaction fall into based on the conditions? Remember for the SN1 mechanism, uh, protic solvents are uh, increase the rate of reaction. And for SN2, the SN2 mechanism, a protic solvents increase the rate of reaction. Remember for the SN1 uh, mechanism, secondary, tertiary, allylic, and benzylic substrates uh, are all favored all favor that mechanism and then uh, for the SN2 primary and secondary substrates uh, favor that mechanism so and then once you have once you've identified everything once you have determined uh, whether or not um, the mechanism is going to be SN1 or SN2 then you execute you know if you're on an exam and it says predict the products then if you know that it's SN1, you know you're going to get a racemic mixture and you draw two products uh, with opposite stereochemistry. Or if it's SN2, then you draw the product with inversion of stereochemistry. And, um, or if you look at the products and the starting material. So you have, have a reactant side of the arrow and the product side of the arrow. And you look at um, the products can you determine the, the mechanism based on the product so let's go to an example we've seen this example already um, but let's just use the ice method here so I, I, let's look at the solvent here the solvent is DMF the nucleophile is uh, methyl sulfide and then my substrate is just an alkyl halide uh, 2 chloro 1 2 3 4 5 pentane right and then when we look at the product what we see is Inversion of stereochemistry, that's a, a, a classic uh, indicator that this is uh, this reaction went through an SN2. We see DMF as the solvent, that's an aprotic solvent. And then we have a good leaving group on a secondary carbon, right? Considering all these factors, um, we, can set, we know that it's a substitution because the chlorine is, has been substituted by the nucleophile. And then considering all these factors, which one... What substitution pathway did it take, SN1 or SN2? When we look at all the factors combined, we have to say that it uh, went through an SN2 mechanism. All right, here's another example. We're doing a reaction in acetic acid, which is a protic solvent uh, with, with the same um, nucleophile, methyl sulfide. And then we have this benzylic uh, alkyl halide or arrow halide here. And when we look at the two products, we see that we get a racemic mixture. So let's go back in and, and let's look at all of the conditions. So a protic solvent, acetic acid is protic. Uh, we're on a, a secondary benzylic carbon. And here, chlorine is the leaving group. Sulfur is my nucleophile. And then when I look at the two products, I have mixed stereochemistry, right? So, yes, a substitution happened, but what type? Was it SN1 or SN2? Based on the factors, we've identified everything, we've categorized, and that we've said it, it was either SN1 or SN2, and then now we have to execute. So, based on all the factors, we can say that the mechanism for this reaction is SN1.